بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد ونصلي على رسول الكريم أما بعد أزد معاذ بن جبل رضي الله عنه سن باست ويسون بي عليه الصلاة والسلام روت ملاتا فإني أحمد الله الذي لا إله إلا هو أما بعد And he instructed him and he told him that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala multiply your reward wa alhamaka sabr and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you tawfiq to make sabr and be patient wa razaqna wa iyaka as shukr and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me and you the opportunity to be grateful to Allah thumma inna nufusana wa amwalana wa ahlina wa awladana wa amwalana min mawahib illahi lhaniya remember O Mu'ad your soul, your wealth, your family, your progeny all your belongings are a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is a trust and an amanah He has just borrowed you these items natamatta'u biha ila ajalim ma'adud so that we can take benefit from them for a stipulated period and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take it away لِوَقْدٍ معلوم on the designated time ثُمَّ افْتَغَرُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْنَا الشُّكْرِ إِذَا أَعْضَى and Allah has made it compulsory for us to be grateful to Him for every bounty and na'mad that He showers on us وَالصَّبْرُ إِذَا بْتَلَى and to be patient when any difficulty, hardship, calamity befalls you وَكَانَ إِبْنُكَ هَذَا مِنْ مُهَايْبِ اللَّهِ الْهَنِيَّةِ remember the sun that has departed from this world is amongst the gifts from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and an amanat which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had given you an opportunity to benefit from and he's departing from this world bi ajrin kabirin in sabarta wahta sabta and your reward will be multifold on condition that you are patient on this difficulty and you are hopeful of reward so do not let your rewards be destroyed through your fears فَتَنْدَمْ عَلَى مَا فَاتَكَ and you become grieved and stressed on your loss because this is an amanat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not grieve because then you will wipe out and erase all your rewards فَلَوْ قَدَّمْتَ عَلَى ثَوَابِ مُسِيبَتِكَ عَرَفْتَ أَنَّ الْمُسِيبَةَ قَدْ قَصْرَتْ عَنْهُمْ and if you had to see the rewards that Allah would bestow you upon this difficulty, this hardship, this calamity you would have known and you would have believed that this calamity was a drop in an ocean it was still too small you would have wished for more calamities to befall you if you had to see the reward which Allah would bestow you in the future. And remember, وَعَلَمْ أَنَّ الْجَزْءِ لَا يَرُدُّ مَيِّتًا That by you grieving, stressing, going into a panic and worrying will not return the deceased. وَلَا يَدْفَوْ حَزَنًا And whatever grief that you can have will not remove anything, will not benefit you one, one but فَلْيَذْهَبْ عَنْكَ أَسَفُكَ بِمَا هُوَ نَازِلٌ بِكَ So your hope of reward and your yaqeen of death that one day I'm going to die and I'm going to be accountable to Allah that should be sufficient to remove your grief because you know that everything is going to come to an end you one day also will come to an end so this is not the world of enjoyment and merrymaking of eternity but you have belief and yakin that there is a greater day a greater time a greater opportunity for a believer and we have come temporarily in this world so if you have that belief and that yakin then you will not have any grief no matter what difficulty or hardship may befall you. 
Among the amal of nubuwa is as-siwak. Shifa'un min kulli da'in illa sam Utilizing the miswak is a cure, a remedy from every sickness and disease. Illa sam except death. So we have done and highlighted the benefits of the miswak. Nabi alayhi salam was so particular when he seen Sahaba addressing Mali Arakum Tadhulun Alayya Kalhan Istaku. What is wrong with you? I see there's some yellowness in your teeth. Utilize the miswak often. We hear many stories, incidents where Sahaba were in battle and they were suffering loss. We have not come across any riwayat. It is some mention of Abdullah ibn Mubarak. The closest that we have come across was uh, Tabri has mentioned where Rusum stand the spy and he noticed Sahaba utilizing it in whenever they were performing salat, wudu, going to sleep, etc. So when the spy returned and Rustam inquired what was their means of sustenance, what should they eat? So he replied, I have no knowledge of them eating anything except a stick which they suck on morning and evening all the time. So we find that the benefits of the miswak is multifold. Ibn Abbas used to say, it cleans the mouth it increases the eyesight, it strengthens the gums, it removes phlegm, the malaika get happy and elated, Allah becomes pleased, and you are conforming to the sunnah, and it increases your amal and your actions and your rewards in salat and it is a means of cure and shifa and strengthening of the body. In other narrations, it increases your memory capacity and it stimulates and aids in hair growth and it brightens the complexion. Sayyid Musa ibn As'ad has mentioned the benefits of miswak and he says that it makes one wealthy man on condition that a person is perpetual of utilizing the miswak, it will make you wealthy. And it repels the whispering of Iblis. It enhances the eloquence of a person's speech and it aids in digestion of food it even delays the aging process it strengthens your back it is a assistant and a friend in the qabr and it is a means of your qabr expanding it enhances intelligence and intellect وَيُذَكِّرُ الشَّهَادَ عِنْدَ الْمَوْتِ And it makes talqeen and reminds a person of the shahadat during the pangs of death when a person is in their last moments of life it reminds one of the kalima وَيُسَهِلُ خُرُوجَ الرُّوْمِ مِنَ الْبَدَنْ And the ruh departs from the body easily وَيَذْهَوُ الْجُوْعِ and it removes hungerness. Where you know where will watch. It's a means of brightening the face. And it removes headaches. It removes the harmful effects of body fluids. It brings out the mucus in the respiratory tracts. So there are many benefits. Scientists have listed also numerous benefits of utilizing the miswak the fact that my nabi used it should be a good enough motivation then alamaini and other ulama have mentioned the dua allahumma tahir for me oh allah cleanse my mouth wa nawwir qalbi no allah brighten illuminate my heart wa tahir badani oh allah cleanse my body wa harrim jasadi ala nar 
and Ya Allah protect my body from the fire of Jahannam. Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhu say that the, the benefits of the miswak among them, three things improve the memory. One is utilizing the miswak, one is fasting, and one is tilawat of Quran. Imam Shafi rahimahullah used to say four things improve memory. One, abstain from useless speech. Two, miswak. Three, spend time with the pious. Four, practice on knowledge. Ibrahim Nakhai said six things. He was the usad of Imam Abu Hanifa rahimahullah. Increase the memory. Eating less, sleeping less, tilawat of Quran, salah in abundance, making a new wudu for every salah, and utilizing the miswak. When you utilize the miswak, it should be held in such a manner that the small finger and thumb is below the miswak and the remaining fingers above the miswak. If we look at the type of miswak that we should utilize, then these miswaks which are not permissible, they are harmful and poisonous. Pomegranate, bamboo, rayhan, etc. So Nabi alayhi salam forbade the use of rehan miswak as it causes sickness, chuzam. But these are the recommended ones. One is pilu tree, which is known as the arak or salvadora persica. On the priority list, number one. Number two, zaitun or as well known the olive. Number three, betum. Number four, any butter one. And number five, walnut tree. The best of miswaks is the Pilu and then the olive kabiri is mentioned. So the pilu tree, which the scientific name himself, Dora Persica, as Aisha radiallahu anha says to Hufia Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fi bayti when Nabi alayhi sallam was departing, he passed away in my house on my lap. Fastanna biha ka'asani ma kana mustannan. The riwayat is long, but in short, he made miswak properly. He made miswak properly before he passed away. As Imam Shawqani said, wa yustahabu ayistaq bi'awd min al-araq. So the araq tree, it is mustahab and preferable to utilize it. Ibn Asad's narration says, Nabi alayhi salam presented me with a miswak of the pilu tree and he said, use the miswak of pilu. Ibn Masud Riwayat always kept a stockpile of the Arak Miswak for Nabi alayhi salatu salam. In Mawaib it is mentioned that the companions of Imam Shafi were of the consensus also that it is mustahab to use this tree. In the absence of that we can use the olive tree and Ni'ma uh, siwak az zaytun min shajaratim mubaraka. What a wonderful Miswak is the olive from a Mubarak and blessed tree, Yatibul Fam wa Yazhabu, and the benefits have been mentioned, and it was Siwaki wa Siwakul Anbiya Qabli. I utilized the Nabi of Allah saying, I utilized the olive Miswak, and it was a Sunnah of the Anbiya from the past. In the absence of that, the Beatum tree, where, when, where the narration in Muntakhab has mentioned this as well, of a butter tree. If a person cannot find any of this, then from any other tree which is available, which is not poisonous and is butter. Uh, otherwise, we can even use from a walnut tree. The adab of utilizing the miswak, it should be straight, devoid of roughness, should be clean, it shouldn't be too hard or too soft. And a person should measure like his hand spin, one hand spin, that should be the length, the thickness of a finger, before utilizing the miswak, it should be cleaned, chewed, softened. And after we use the miswak and before, if a person has water available, otherwise afterwards, he should try to rinse it as well. The miswak should not be sucked. It should be placed in vertical position when possible. And when it is very dry, then we should try to moisten it. We should try to moisten it. We shouldn't be using the miswak in the toilet. And each section of the mouth should be brushed. As Dufran mentions, this is discussed with ulama, 
of which direction, but whatever the direction is, start from one portion of the mouth from the right side. Let's say we start from the upper portion of the right jaw, whether we go in horizontal or vertical, in every tooth till the left side, then bottom right till the end left, then inside right, left, bottom right, left, the teeth on top and bottom as well, and the tongue also, we should utilize the miswak. We should not use both ends of the miswak, only one side. And we should make sure that we trim it. So many people, the miswaks look like a mop. We should trim it as often as possible. They say worst case, every week, if more than that, better. But a person can gauge and see how often they utilize it. But the bristles should be like the bristles of a toothbrush. And it shouldn't be like a baseball bat so big and bulky as well. So all the details have been mentioned. If there is no miswak for some reason, a person can utilize the fingers as mentioned in the riwayat, rubbing the teeth with the forefinger and thumb. As it Amr bin Auf Muzani also mentions that the fingers could be used as an adequate substitute for a miswak in the absence. Imam Tahtawi is also mentioned that the reward for utilizing the miswak will be achieved in a circumstance where there is no availability of the miswak. So a person for some reason is in a traveling or in the distant land and they cannot get access to that and they lose it and they can utilize the fingers. Or in some mention also a coarse piece of cloth can be also utilized in the absence of the miswak. The benefits are multifold. If you look at the ingredients in the miswak, silica in the miswak acts as an abrasive material to remove stains, giving the teeth whiteness. The tannic acid also uh, reduces plaque and gingivitis. The resin forms a layer of the enamel which protects it against all bacteria. Then there's alkaloids which exerts a bacterial effect and stimulates the action. Uh, there is essential oils which are in the miswak which create an aroma and an antiseptic action. And thus also stimulates the flow of the saliva, which also is a type of an antiseptic. The sulfur compounds present in the miswak also show that uh, they have a bacterial effect. The vitamin C in the miswak helps the healing and repairing of tissues if there's any damage as well. Sodium bicarbonate, has also uh, abrasive properties and uh, it gives it a germicidal action. Then there is a high concentration of chloride which inhibits calculus formation which helps removing stains from the teeth as mentioned in the rewrite. Calcium saturation of saliva inhibits and promotes remineralization of tooth enamel. So bacteria plaque uh, erades uh, it, erodes the enamel and this is a means of strengthening it. Then a lot of research has been done uh, in different aspects with regards to the miswak and data for that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq of making amal and realizing the value of utilizing the miswak. The amal for today is to read 33 times subhanallah, 33 times alhamdulillah, 34 times Allahu Akbar. La yakhibu qailuhunna. Whoever says these after every salat, they will not be unsuccessful. Sahaba came to Nabi alayhi salam and complained that the wealthy people are spending in the path of Allah. We don't have that. The poor Sahaba complained. So Nabi alayhi salam told them the same thing. After every salat, read us 33, 33, 34 times. Then they came back again. He said, you will surpass them. But when they came back, they said, the wealthy people have found out of this amal. Now they will surpass us in Akhirat. Nabi alayhi salam said, ذَلِكَ فُضْلُ اللَّهِ يُؤْتِيهِ مَنْ يَشَعُ This is the fadl and the virtue of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He grants whom he wishes. Another rewrite we have done this. خُفِرَتْ لَهُ خَطَوْيَاهُ وَإِنْ كَانَتْ مِثْلَ زَبَدِ الْبَحْرِ His sins will be forgiven. Even if they are the amount of foams in the ocean, wa akhiru da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alameen.